entrepreneurs who had to make a big leap in their lives, people who did something before becoming an entrepreneur, people who didn't even see themselves as entrepreneurs before they became entrepreneurs. Today I'm speaking with Rebecca Opetisano. She is the owner of Bluebird Music Together, which is an early childhood music and movement program. I know Rebecca from a really long time ago when my little guy was little and when I took her class, she was a teacher for this music program. She didn't own it at the time. And so that's how I met her. And I've been so lucky to keep up with her over the years. So Rebecca, I know you're a mom of three kids. You have a husband. You have a very busy, thriving business. So thank you for giving us your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you for interviewing me. I'm excited. I'm so glad to be here with you. Can you tell us us uh, briefly about what Bluebird Music Together is, who you are, and what you do. What have you brought to life? Sure. So, um, so like you said, Bluebird Music Together <laughs> is an early childhood music program. Um, we offer classes all over the Syracuse area. We have right now six different locations and um, a brand new studio. And um, a typical class is um, between eight and 12 families who all come together and um, create a musical environment for their little ones to thrive in. So we sing, we dance, we play rhythm, rhythm instruments. And, um, and uh, I started out just teaching the program. And um, about five years ago, I w um, had the great fortune of being offered to buy the business and um, make it my own. So, um, so now I'm the owner and director. I also still teach uh, a bunch of classes every week. Um, and, um, and I love teaching. I love owning the business. And um, it's some, something that's really grown with me over the years. So I'm, I'm curious why bringing this particular dream to life, like why was owning it important to you? Why I, we're going to talk later about how you made the leap, but why did you make the leap of just being happy as a teacher and showing up with your families to ownership? Why was that so important? Well, my favorite part of the business has always been the teaching part. Mm -hmm. um, teaching is my background. I have my degree in music education and um, my master's in general education. And I always looked at myself as a teacher and, um, at, at a certain point, the the previous owner came to me and she said, you know, you're the one that's putting in all the hard work here. You um, clearly have a great passion for what you do and this this type of work. And would you be interested in buying the business from me because I'm ready to do some other things? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I mean the teaching part is my favorite part. Like that's the part that I feel like I really thrive in and I'm really good at. And I don't know if I could be a business owner. So I really gave it a lot of thought before I decided to, as you say, make the leap. And it, it wasn't really, it didn't really feel like a leap to me. It felt more of like a, a slow, like <laughs> crawl almost. Cause I was like, uh, do I want to be a business owner. You know, I know that it, it's a risk. And, um, at the time I had, uh, let's see, it was five years ago. So my kids were seven, nine and 11. I have three. Little. So I had you know, little. a busy family, um, active kids and, you know, a hubby that works a lot. And I was like, Ooh, do I, do I want to do that? But, um, when I, when I really gave it a lot of thought, I decided, yes, I do, because um, I, I want to make this business my own. I felt limited. I felt like there were many times where I, want, I thought I had some great ideas on how I could help the business grow, and I had, some, um, I, I had a lot of initiative to make the business better and greater, and I didn't have the ability to do that because I didn't have the control. So it wasn't until I was really like, if I do this, I could make this so great and I could make it so much bigger and better than what it is. And I could really um, offer more families the thing that I love to do the most. So I looked at it as an opportunity for 
for growth in, um, in what I do and also growth in the community. Yeah. And that's when I decided, yeah, I, maybe I could do that. <laughs> I love this line of conversation. Are you there? Okay, good. I love this line of conversation because I am. You, you say you were, you have a, a degree in music education and a master's degree in education. And I think a lot of people that I, that want to bring their idea to life and a lot of people that I work with too, they will tell themselves, but I don't have a business degree. I'm not a business person. And almost all the soulful, creative women I work with don't have business degrees and it it usually holds them back at the beginning because they're like oh I'm just a and fill in the blank Mm -hmm. and then they're like but I don't have an MBA and I love that you didn't let that hold you back because clearly you are a business owner you are an entrepreneur you knew you wanted from what I heard you say you wanted freedom and you wanted control and that was important to you and so for the people out there who are watching this um, if, if you know that you're really great at something and you're looking for some more freedom and some more control, you do have to make a leap from employee mindset to owner mindset. Yeah. And I have to tell you, like, I don't feel like I went, just jumped right into feeling like I was a business owner. I think I remember even just a couple years ago saying to somebody, um, a friend, like, I feel like I'm pretending all the time that I own a business and I'm say I'm faking it every single day. I feel like I'm faking being a business owner, like fake it till you make it type of a thing because it wasn't a part of my background. It wasn't something that I ever really imagined doing um, throughout my college. And, you know, um, even the first few years of my working career, um, I was an elementary music teacher and Mm -hmm. like, that's what I always thought I would do. And so, um, so it took me a really long time to actually feel like, oh, I am an entrepreneur. I am a business owner and I am not horrible at it either. (laughs) One of the things you just said, I think is important. You said you were talking to a friend that you felt like you kind of had, um, you were wearing a suit that didn't fit you, you know, you, it wasn't yours. And if you lived in isolation and you never said that to anybody, those thoughts can be really heavy. And those without being in community with other people who feel like you, because I know that every single person feels that way. They were all just kind of faking it at different parts of our day. Even when we get really seasoned, we're like, oh, this is a new thing I need to learn. So I'm curious, beyond the thoughts that like I'm I'm masquerading, what other like painful or troubling thoughts kept you kept you heavy in your mind? Yeah, there's always um, so many fears, you know, when you're trying to to make something grow. There were there were a lot of times where I said, "Do I want to grow, and can I handle it?" Mm-hmm. Um, you know, especially with a, fa- a busy family, and um, you know, I was I was always afraid to to make little jumps to, to allow myself to grow. Cause there were times when I was like, I don't know, I don't know if I can do it. Mm -hmm. Um, there were times when I, I felt like, um, like who am I to, to, you know, like who am I, this little music teacher to allow this to grow, to like make t-shirts for my business (laughs) and like get my own studio. Like, what do like, do I even, deserve that. And it's so horrible for me to say, of course I do. Everybody deserves to see their dreams fulfilled, but there, there were, there were definitely fear. There's always fears. And, um, yeah, it's hard to override those fears that really weigh you down sometimes. Yes. And who are you to do this when I'm really just an imposter wearing something that doesn't really fit me. Right. So they go together, you know, like if you don't believe that you are the thing you are, you're constantly saying, well, who am I to do this? And then there's this other piece that when you do make the leap, because I've watched you do this every time you make a leap, it's successful. And I'm not saying that it's not hard work. You, you really put a lot of thought. You're very thoughtful and very detailed and you consider things. So when you do make the leap, they often go very well. And so again, it's like, who am I to be doing this? Because it's just like, who am I to have such, such abundance and such, you know, positivity in my life? Who, who I, a lot of my clients struggle with that. Like, oh, there's so many people around me suffering yet. Everything I do seems to work out for me. Yeah. 
And and it, it looks like it from the outside, but like you said, a lot of hard work, a lot of thought goes into this. And you know, I um, I have some coworkers who are like, "Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? How about if we do this?" And I'm always like, "I'm the kind of person that needs to stop and think and weigh out all the options and really um, really take note of what the outcomes will be before it happens." And so I am. I am a thinker. Like I feel like I'm a creative type, but I'm also cautious and that's helpful to me in my line of work because I don't want to grow too fast and then burn out. I don't want to um, allow things to just like explode and then not know how to handle it afterwards. I know uh, myself and I know what I can handle. And um, so I take things in stride and, um, and my growth, my business has grown Every single year I've had it, it's grown. Um, I've never had a down time. I know someday it probably will come, um, but I have grown pretty um, pretty consistently, and and it's been a slow growth, but it's steady, and it's what I need. So it's good for me. You're a creative who is able to implement strategy. I think yes. that's what your superpower is because some creative people like they tend to be kind of in this, this creative vortex where it's always, always, always ideas. But what I love about working with you is you were able to have your ideas and see your vision and then slow down and implement them, but not slow down enough to where you would stop, which is where some people get stuck. They get like, they get too afraid. So you were able to kind of balance both. I think that's a, that's a huge benefit to your business. Don't take that for granted. I want you to just know, like, not everybody operates that way. Thanks. <laughs> so I know how much work it is to make the leap that you make and also to make the leaps that you've made along the way, the little, the little jumps to, to grow and scale. What are some things that you had to shift or give up in order to make those things happen? Well, that's a good question. Um, so I have employees, um, and I have uh, a lot of different locations. And um, one of the things that has challenged me is really um, juggling all the balls, you know, mm -hmm. like trying to figure out um, what my strengths are and what I enjoy doing and what the, the different parts of my business that are working for me. And then um, giving up some of the things that, I don't enjoy doing and give, giving up is hard for me because I do like knowing that I'm doing the job and I'm doing it the way I want it to be done. Um, so uh, one of the things I did over the past year or two was slowly um, giving up the accounting work that um, that was really weighing me down because I don't like, I don't like that stuff. I don't like, the numbers and I don't, um, I like the creative part of my business so much more than the statistical part of my business. So, um, so I, I, I asked for help and that was really hard mm -hmm. <laughs> and I found, um, someone to help me with that. And then, uh, the next step was to find someone to, um, to help me with some admin work. And, uh, that was a really difficult part to give up because that's a lot of customer service mm -hmm. and, uh, knowing that somebody is going to do the job the way I want it to be done is really challenging. So, um, the irony of what you're saying is I got into the business. I made the leap originally from teacher to owner because I wanted control. Yeah. And then what you figure out when you're ready to scale is that you actually need to give up a little control in order to get some of your life back. So it's like you, you want the control, but then you actually have to give up some of the control. But you, you ultimately, as the director, have creative control. Yes, yes. And that's um, that part of it is um, – is really important to me and it's special mm -hmm. for me to be able to, you know, to make, to make those decisions that I feel are right for my business and knowing that it's, um, that, is, that my business is a reflection of myself. Like this is not just what I do. And I think that, um, you know, probably all entrepreneurs feel that way. So you put your heart and soul into your business. You work tirelessly to make it everything that you are dreaming that it will be. And, uh, you know, the, part of the fears that come up are like, well, what if I do it and it's 
terrible, right? <laughs> or <laughs> what if I do it and I don't succeed? And then is that is that mean? Does that mean that I don't succeed? You know, as a person or as a human or as a um, as a business owner, or whatever. Um, so. So yeah, you, you you have to give up a little bit. You have to bend and play and pull and push and yeah. and and you have to keep doing it because your business is ever changing and growing and shrinking or whatever it is, is happening to it at the time. Right. Uh, and 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 it's one of the things I love about being an entrepreneur and one of the things I'm like it's exhausting about being an entrepreneur, right? Like so true. Never stop. It never slows down. It's always exciting. There's always something new, but there's also never a time where you go home and you set your bag down and okay. Yes. It's over yes. clocking out. Like you don't clock out when you're no. a business. Owner. No, and no you, matter how hard you try, there's a saying that entrepreneurs will work a um, hundred hours a week to avoid working forty hours for somebody else. Yes, and it's so true. Like I don't think I could ever go back to working for somebody else. But it's not like I'm not working yeah. a lot. You know, I'm working really hard. It's this, but it, but it's freedom and control. Like I still have some semblance of freedom, some semblance of control, even though I'm you know chained to the business and I'll get up in the morning and do email. Um, but it's the the creative freedom that I was looking for and that I'm hearing you were looking for. So I'm curious before you did all of this stuff and if you, and, and maybe not even if we go back to the before Rebecca, but maybe like just past Rebecca, right before you make a big leap or you move to scale, what are some things you wished you had known that would have made it easier for you if you had believed before? Uh, well, if I could tell the future or the past Rebecca, mm -hmm. um, what, um, what I know now, I think I would say, um, uh, stop, don't drag your feet. You know, if you know that something is good for you, don't allow your fears to hold you back. Um, there were so many times where I said, you know, I really want this, but mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think it's the right time or I can't put the time into it now or, um, you know, what if I suck, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and those, those things really did hold me back from the things I really wanted. Um, and, uh, and it was a matter of just taking steps. Once I decided I really was going to go for that thing, um, and setting up some steps to actually make it happen, it happened. And I was like, oh, what? what? <laughs> you're getting your brick and mortar is a great example. I remember us having a conversation and you're like, I think someday maybe I want this. And then you were ready to put it off for a year. Right. And then the next thing I knew, you had it. And you were talking to the guy, the, the, the commercial real estate guy, and you were like having meetings and you, boom, it felt like boom. Now, I know it wasn't boom. But it felt like, boom, it happened, right? It, it kind of did. And I'll say that it wasn't until I said out loud, I want this and I want it within this period of time mm -hmm. that it actually happened. And, um, and when, yeah, if you look at it, um, you know, through a narrow lens, it did happen overnight. It was boom. It was like I, I had to believe it in order to have it come to fruition. Yes. And then once I believed it, it, the right things showed up at the right times. And I really, I, you know, I'm not really a uh, superstitious or, you mm -hmm. know, um, woo -woo. I, I, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> the woo woo kind of thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm hesitant about, but also I really do believe that if you, if you really believe you want something and you say it out loud, then yeah. it becomes a reality. And until you do that, your dreams are not going to happen. They're, they're just, just kind of like soupy in your head then. Yeah. You they're just get them stuck. out. Yeah. They're stuck. You have to get them out and you have to say it out loud. And I say that not just about um, being an entrepreneur, but about everything. Like if I say out loud to my 
family or my friends, I'm not going to eat sugar this week because I know I ate way too much sugar last week and it, I feel awful. I feel gross and I feel like, you know, like I'm not healthy right now. Mm-hmm. And I'll say it to myself a dozen times and it won't matter until I say it out loud. Mm-hmm. That's when it happens that I actually commit to it. That's really great advice for a creative out there who's got a whole bunch of ideas in her head that feel really heavy and soupy and they get intertwined. It's also advice that I give to my private clients to get it out, put it on a piece of paper, tell somebody. But when we tell somebody, it's scary because then we're like held accountable for that. Right. What other advice would you give to a creative person who has an idea that's kind of stuck in her head? Um... Hmm. Share ideas. Find a group that you can bounce ideas off of. Um, Go around and, you know, make phone calls, talk to old friends. Just um, keep an open mind and talk to people because you never know who is going to say, hey, have you ever thought about, you know, doing this? Or have you ever considered um, reaching out to this type of a person or this type of a, a, a business that might be able to assist you. Um, I got so many great, I, I get so many great ideas every month at our women's entrepreneur meeting mm-hmm. um, that we're both a part of. I get great ideas from my friends, from my family, from my coworkers, um, just having conversations and just keeping an open mind. Um, sometimes that can allow more soupiness, but also it sometimes leads to where you need to go. Yeah. Even though you didn't know it was. You didn't even know that was where you were headed, right? Yeah. We used to talk about, you and I have had conversations about um, possibility. Like, have you ever considered this? That's kind of what you're saying, right? Like, you need somebody to say to you, have you considered having somebody answer your emails for you? Have you considered... Uh, having somebody take care of this part of your business and you hadn't given it a lot of thought before because it felt too scary and overwhelming and like lack of control. But sometimes you need somebody outside of yourself to just say, this is a possibility. And that sometimes is enough, right? Right. And that's what and you're saying. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Somebody to say, Hey, have you thought about this? And what if you did it? Would it really be as scary or as daunting as you think it will be because sometimes we tell ourselves all these stories about oh it's going to be so hard it's going to be so scary it's I don't have the time and um and then you got to get real with yourself sometimes and sometimes you need somebody to help you with that and say you know would it really be that if you really when it really comes down to it the answer is often no. It's not going to be that bad. Right, right. Yeah. Like, and what's the worst thing that could happen? So even if it was hard, could I handle it? Or what would I do? You know, there's the, um, there's the fear. You talked a little bit about this. What happens if I fail? And if I fail, I can handle it. Like, I know that whatever does happen, I have my own back. And I think that we don't believe that's for ourselves sometimes. And sometimes we need somebody else to believe it for us. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. How can people now? I know you're located in Syracuse. So how can people in the, Sy- the greater Syracuse area connect with Bluebird Music Together? Um, they can go to bluebirdmusictogether.com. Okay. Our website is uh, very active. It has our full schedule of classes, um, announcements, events, um, talks about all of our locations and teachers. So I would say that is where you would go first. You can contact me through um, my email address, uh, director at bluebirdmusictogether.com. Um, and as you know, as I said before, an entrepreneur never, never <laughs> shuts down completely. So um, I'm always around to help answer questions and uh, share ideas. And um, I'm a big advocate of, um, supporting other small businesses, especially women owned businesses. And so if you are a business owner, um, or a a female entrepreneur and you want to connect with me to see how we can help each other, um, I'm always open and ready to chat. That's beautiful. Thank you. 
<laughs> what ages you you guys go into schools, but you also have a babies class. You do babies through you know, what are the ages? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, we have an infants class for newborns. Um and then we have a lot of classes for babies through age five. Those are our mixed age classes. And then uh we have launched a new program called Rhythm Kids, which is for ages five through eight. So it really spans the early childhood, you know, period of birth through age eight, which is when the um, which is when the the period of growth for music making is really at its peak. So um, I will say, as a personal customer for Bluebird Music Together, uh, it was very useful to my son. That it was great for my kid, but it was great for me. Because I made relationships there that I still have to this day. I met moms and other kids who, um, God, it got me out of the house and it got me doing things that I don't normally do. I'm not a music person. So it got me out of my comfort zone. It was such a great experience. So if you are not in the Syracuse area, is music together something that you can look for for your kid? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Music together is a curriculum that is offered in pretty much every big city around the country. And it's actually international as well. There are, um, there are music together centers in China and Spain and Taiwan and Australia. I mean, it's, wow. it, it's a really, um, well-respected and renowned early childhood program. So, um, Bluebird music together is my, my center in Syracuse. But if you are looking for an early childhood um, support group, go find another Music Together Center anywhere else in the country. Um, you can go to musictogether.com and do a class locator awesome. and put your zip code and see if there's one near you. Perfect. I didn't know it was international. That's great to know. Yeah, yeah. Rebecca, thank you so much for your insights and your vulnerability and sharing this stuff with us because I think that the more women out there who know that there are people bringing their ideas to life, that it's inspirational and motivational and really helpful. So I appreciate your time today. Thank you so My much. Pleasure. Yeah, it's great to see you. It's also great to see you too. I'll see you on Friday, actually. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, good. <laughs> good. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Thank this you. Was fun.